Hi, I'm Tom Jones, and again, welcome to another free art lesson. I want to talk to you a little bit uh, today about a little bit better landscape design. Uh, on occasion, I will get uh, emails from students, and sometimes they will email an image of a painting they've done. Uh, I had this happen recently from a student who was in one of my workshops, uh, and they proudly wanted to show me what they were doing and so forth, and I always take the time with the students to answer their emails and also to do a critique on a painting and um, either make suggestions to them or congratulate them on doing a great job. This was an example of what I did recently with a student who did email me uh, one of his, of his paintings. And this is a, a, a typical type of painting that I get from many students. So I want to take the time with you today to show you basically the setup of this particular design, which is fairly common sometimes from new painters, and then to show you how you might want to improve this particular design. So let's take a moment and just review. You may notice that in this case, he put a tree area right in the middle of his painting. You may also notice that on the horizontal plane, he put the horizon line again in the middle of the painting, and basically it chops the painting right in half this way and in half this way. I would suggest to you that you try to avoid making some of these uh, particular errors. Try to avoid putting anything prominent in the center of your painting. Rather than do that, have it off to the side somehow, but try to avoid putting it in the center of the painting, especially if it's a prominent shape. Now, the other thing is watch your horizon line. I would suggest to you that you make your horizon line somewhere no more than one-third of the way from the bottom of the paper or no more than one-third from the top of the paper. Less is more. So if you bring it down even less than a third, that's even more powerful. Or bring it up so that there's less than a third at the top, that's even more powerful. You'll notice also that what the gentleman has done in this case, and this is a fairly typical uh, mistake that can be made by new painters, is they have equal proportions of shapes, in this case they're tree shapes, on both sides framing their particular area of the painting. They did the same thing with a grass area right here. You'll notice that they're equal shapes on the same line and equal shapes on the same line here. Another thing that I would suggest to you is don't think of the edge of your paper uh, as a frame where everything has to go inside of the particular paper in a painting. Now, what I would suggest to you, and, and photography to, uh, schools will teach this as well, have objects go outside the frame, meaning have it go off the edge of the paper, off to the sides or through the top. What I would suggest to you is have some of the trees, as an example, go off the frame through the top, or clouds, as the case may be. Or if you're doing a sailboat, have the mass go off and out of the frame. Also, in addition to that, don't allow yourself to pull your objects inside so neatly as if you were packing a suitcase and you had everything inside the suitcase, you put your arms on it and then you locked it very safely. In, in a, what I'm trying to say to you is have the clothes hanging out the side of the suitcase, so to speak. Have objects going out of the frame. So let me take just a moment and let me flip the page here and I'm going to show you now how I would change this particular design. What I did is I had a shape over here on the left, and you'll notice that I have a shape as well on the right, but they're not the same portion, are they? Okay? This shape is larger than this one. In addition to that, I used a diagonal design rather than having a straight line coming across my painting. So you'll notice I didn't cut the painting in half this way or this way. So I have nothing prominent in the center of my painting, I have two trees that are going out of the frame, or one of the trees is going out of the frame here, and I have this tree lower than this tree. Notice how this edge comes forward to give the illusion that this tree is closer and this one's farther away, okay? So have that object go out of the frame. You'll notice off to the sides as well, this larger shape goes out of the frame this way, and this particular shape goes out of the frame that way. Again. Also, with the grass area, you'll notice in this particular illustration right here again, we had the grass area equal shapes, and we had them right on the same parallel with the tree all the way across. Stop and think for a moment before you start to sketch. I had a large area of grass here, 
and proportionally nothing over here for grass, okay? Now the shading you see obviously here is shading in the vertical plane or the grass or the meadow area. But notice the difference in the design. In addition, I also added a distant mountain area here. So I have various size shapes going on. I have an area up here of sky, a, a different size shape here for the distant mountain. I have another shape of a different size here. So it's large, medium, and small shapes rather than proportionally equal shapes. Over here, the same idea, a large shape versus a small shape, and then one large shape of the grass area. Two trees, different shapes. One is taller, one is shorter. Okay, so this is a simple illustration of how to make this particular design a better design by changing it around. I hope you've enjoyed this particular free art lesson, and I hope that this has been valuable to you. Email me sometimes at tom at tomjonesartist.com. Send me one of your paintings, and I'll be happy to do a critique for you. Thank you very much for joining me.